Welcome to Unsafe Space. I'm your host, Carter Laren. Please like and subscribe to the show at youtube.com slash unsafe space. We also make audio versions of all of our shows available, which you can find by searching for Unsafe Space on your favorite podcast app. And of course, we're on Twitter, uh, but we're Unsafe Show on Twitter. And on Facebook, just look for the Unsafe Space page. Today, I'm joined by Bosch Faustin. Bosch is an Eisner Award-nominated cartoonist. They're like the Oscars of comics. He's also the winner of the Muhammad Cartoon Contest that ended with two jihadists getting their heads blown off. Literally. He's the creator of the anti-jihad superhero comic book Pigman, as well as other books. He is about to release the fourth Pigman comic book, The Infidel Number 4, and a new book called Peaceful Death Threats which is a collection of the many death threats that he's gotten for drawing Muhammad, and which inspired him to draw 60 new Muhammad cartoons created exclusively for the book. He's probably one of the most courageous people in the art world today, so I'm really happy to get a chance to speak with him. So there's a lot I'd like to talk to you about, and I think the most recent incident is, is the most bizarre to me, I've never heard of anyone getting banned on Facebook for what you got banned for, Bosch. Tell us what happened. Like, what did you say and what got you banned on Facebook? I wrote that uh, only Hitler is Hitler. Literally, and, that's all you uh, said? That's all. I said Hitler is Hitler and I had a cartoon of Hitler bitching and moaning about the fact that only he's Hitler. He goes, you, you're not Hitler, I'm Hitler. And they banned me, and they said it was, I think, hate speech or hateful conduct or whatever they, whatever you know, verbiage they, they used. And I thought that was uh, the worst ban I've ever gotten. I mean, I've been banned for, you know, on on, on Twitter for criticizing Marvel's uh, Muslim superhero because it's, it's it's Islamic propaganda that Marvel's shoving down our throats, and I criticize, and they banned me, you right. know. And then uh, Facebook banned me right after the Gardon attack. Uh, hours after, it must have been hours, or m m maybe a day after, I was, I was banned with no explanation, no nothing. Uh, th th that was the first time. And then I, I, I realized, I think it was a wave of Muslims who, since, they, since their fellow Muslims didn't get me in Garland, they were gonna get me at least on social media. And it worked. And Facebook uh, banned me, and then they, they apologized hours later. So it was a mistake. But this, this recent one with Hitler, it's to me, no one is safe now when you can't say that only Hitler is Hitler. I don't, did they and, say who was offended by that? And like, who, no, who's the no. hate speech towards? No, it was hateful conduct on my part. And I got 30 days. No appeal. And that's no appeal, zero. I tried again and again. I told him, I said, we're talking about Hitler, Adolf Hitler. <laughs> I'm saying you shouldn't call average people Hitler. That was my point, And you banned me for that. And uh, I thought they were going to keep going because they banned me three, they suspended me three or four times in a row within a month. Uh, after it was in particular after the um, the new Muhammad contest, the, the, the new Muhammad cartoon contest that Herbold was going to have, who he canceled it at the last minute. And after that, I got thousands and thousands of death threats from mainly Pakistanis on Facebook, so you know, social media, even on Twitter. Who I'm, you know, I'm not on anymore. But they were they were threatening my life on Twitter. Jesus. And I complained. People complained. A very few of them were, you know, suspended or banned. The uh, the uh, Muslims who threatened, and that's why, you know, they're they lie when they say they're politically neutral. They're absolutely lying their asses off. They do go after conservatives. They go after objectivists. They go after libertarians. They go after anyone who criticizes leftism, anyone who criticizes Islam. Uh, it's it, it, it's an unstated rule of theirs, and that's why I call them frauds because they claim to be something. And they allow death threats. I mean, obscene death threats, rape threats. I never got rape threats until you know months ago. Uh, hardcore rape threats combined with with, with death threats, and uh, Facebook allows it. And so, that's why you know I write you know with social media, who needs government censorship? And it's not the point that I'm I, I want the government to come in. I sure as hell don't. I was going to ask about that because a lot of people's yeah. reaction is the government should regulate it. I can't stand that, and I really can't stand people who presume who uh, you know to, to tell us that government is a problem, and then they want to run to the government, and it's just pathetic. And if if that goes through, imagine if you have these totalitarians like Obama in power next time, and what he would do with that. Of course. And I just you know it's just it's 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 a ridiculous argument, 
And it's a point that these companies deserve to be beaten by some competitors. Yeah, by in the free really, market. absolutely, by ones who don't lie when they say that they're politically neutral, who are politically neutral, who don't punish people, who don't target people. Um, that's what we need. And, uh, you know, th- but they have so much power now. That's why it's, it's, not a, it's not an argument to say, oh, they have the right. Sure, they have the right to collude with our enemies, to go after our citizens, like Pakistan is doing with Twitter and Pamela Geller. You know, Pakistan, Twitter just sent uh, Pamela Geller an email saying you have violated Pakistani law. You may want to get a lawyer. I mean, this oh, is- Oh, I saw that, me. yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's unreal. They are in bed with totalitarians against us, yeah. and they claim to be these free speech neutral platforms, and they're and they're not. What do you think about the argument that okay, they have a right to do what they want on their platform, but they represent themselves and through their terms of service in a way that um, is contrary to how they behave, and there should be some liability there. Yeah, they are they are frauds. Uh, they are they're officially frauds. And if the if the law can go after them on that basis, that's a pretty good one. If that's going to happen, that's that's the thing that they can get them on. So wait a minute, you're you're lying. When they go to Congress and lie and say no, we are not going after conservatives. We are not going after those who criticize Islam. And they're lying. Right. It's a fact. Everyone knows this. And when they don't go after individuals who threaten the lives of their users, who threaten to rape them thousands of times repeatedly and, and it's not like, it's not like they can't know that there's one you know one user of theirs who, who alone who had thousands of these right um and they allow that to happen and then when i put hitler is hitler they ban me so it's just on that basis you know legally then you could have a decent lawyer who says you know what this is fraud uh they have you know billions of followers now uh, they are a major source of communication in this world, and they are underhanded in their policies. Yeah, I mean, people like you and, and other people, they spend time and effort and resources building audiences on these platforms. Absolutely. Under and the... they're important. And I love social media. Yeah. I mean, I love getting out there. I love getting my ideas out there, getting my work out there. Uh, it's a great thing. And they are corrupting. Their, they are destroying them, them themselves. They're destroying their own reputation. Right. And it's just it's, you know, I, I, that's why I call it socialist media, yeah. because these are run by hardcore leftists and they bring in Muslims also. Who knows how many Muslims they brought in just to prove that they're not, you know, anti Muslim, anti Islam right. uh, to 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 police us. Yep. Yeah. And and you and you spend all that time and energy and resources and invest that into that platform under the with the understanding based on their own terms of service and their own promise that you'll be treated fairly and they right. respect uh, free speech in some in some manner. And right. it's to me, it's almost like you go to a store to buy an iPhone, you hand them your 800 bucks and they give you an empty box and they're like, right. yeah, yeah, well, we changed our right. minds. You don't get an iPhone. It's like, well, true. you don't have to sell me one, but you did take my money. <laughs> right? right. You did they promise. Want you, they want you on there, but they want to make sure you don't step out of line and they don't make that clear. Right. They say, hey, come on in. We want you. We want you to share your ideas, meet, meet like minded people across the world. And and, the, and again, on that basis, it's great. Right. But uh, they've corrupted it. They've corrupted them. They've corrupted themselves. They've been in bed with evil. Um, and it's just it's, it's unacceptable. And, you know, for political reasons, for ideological reasons. And I just uh, again, it's a it's a great value. And someone will come along some company will come along and start to really hurt them in the market. Uh, I don't know who yet, but it, it, it will happen because it's, it, I mean, it, it's open now. Social media is a thing. It's important in our lives and someone will come, a decent you know, uh, platform will come and say, okay, and it, it's not even like we are a free speech platform. They don't have to go to that level. Right. It, it, won't, it won't have to be called free speech platform. It'll be just something that's, uh, you got these rational individuals say, you know, we want to get in on this, but we're not going to punish people for their ideas. Right. We're and, not going to ban know, people never, for saying Hitler yeah. is Hitler. I mean, I mean, it's just, it's, it's to me, it's, it's, that's, it's, it's cartoony. I mean, I made a cartoon about it. Yeah. The guys say, you know, uh, he's as bad as Hitler. I said, only Hitler is Hitler. Hey, watch it, watch it, watch it. Facebook, you know, you're out of line there. Uh, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's kind like of funny, something... except for uh, how horrifying and pervasive it is. Yeah. Um, right. But uh, 
and voices are being silenced. Uh, important voices are being silenced. Um, uh, Ex-Muslims are being targeted uh, with their groups that have millions of followers. They're being shut down these rooms because of the quote unquote hate speech. And it, it, I never, I hate things. Yes, I do. But I'm not out there hating individuals, hating certain things. I hate evil. I hate, I hate ideas that are detrimental to our lives. Uh, you know, and but they, if you do that, if you express that in any kind of direct and strong way, they get, they're going to target you. Yeah. And they see it as hatred. It's like anything that is, you know, if you're honest about Islam, you're insulting Islam by the nature of the ideology. If you're honest about it, you're, you will inevitably insult it because it's a horrific ideology. And therefore, you'll be punished for making it known that, wait a minute, if you're honest about Islam, you're insulting Islam. It's a terrible thing. And, uh, but they, they don't make that distinction. Just, just the fact that if, if you criticize it, it's the religion of peace. It's, it's, uh, it's the new, most protected ideology on earth today, even more so than uh, you know, transgenderism, as if that's an ideology. But uh, yeah, I just, um, it's a great thing, you know, social media, it's very useful to me, to individuals across the world. But when they start policing it, as if they're a government, it's, um, is, is dangerous to our, to, to our culture, because it's so widespread now, it got billions of people involved in it. And these ideas are, you know, are also one thing they do is they vilify individuals who criticize Islam as the villains of the world. I mean, they, they're treated even worse than terrorists. They're even, they're even condemned harsher in harsher terms than the terrorists are. And that's a real problem. Yeah. So you're reminding me actually of the David Horowitz quote. Uh, what is it? Uh, Inside every progressive is a totalitarian screaming to get out. Right. Uh, that's great. I, it's a great quote. It really is. And it's, it, and it's it so poignant, especially I feel like in the past uh, couple years, the um, the totalitarian left has really uh, um, shown their true colors and started yep. to have have a lot more influence on the left than there aren't really any classical liberals left. Uh, there aren't. There used to there's, be. There's a, uh, Dershowitz. Yep. Uh, he is the one who I still respect. Yep. But I think he's foolish to even connect himself with the left. He's a liberal. He's a classical. He's right. Not but a you leftist. can't be liberal and on the left anymore. If you're liberal, no, you're you no can't. longer on the left. And I think they're alienating day by day by day. They're calling him. A Nazi, right? <laughs> you know what I mean. Right. They call David Horowitz a Nazi. They call uh, Ben Shapiro a Nazi. Right. It's, it's ludicrous. Yeah. And but they gotta I, be reminded. We, yeah. Apparently, uh, only Hitler is not only Hitler. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Only Hitler is not Hitler. <laughs> it's hilarious. So, um, let let me uh let's let's dive in a little bit because I don't know that everyone understands. You've chosen to to really make fighting Islam. Um, I would say maybe the central theme of your work here is a, is a yeah. way to describe it. Your 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 mission. Yeah, it is. Post nine eleven, yes. Yeah, uh, and I just I I just wanted to to write and draw comic books before, but post nine eleven, it just you know I had to do something. I had to. Right, right, and 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 I don't think everyone, uh, maybe everyone watching here probably doesn't realize, you grew up in a Muslim family, I and did. you are a what you say is a reformed Muslim. So it's not yeah, like I you mean, don't understand yeah. Islam. Right. I call myself uh, um, uh, a recovered Muslim. Recovered. You know? Sorry, not reformed. Right. Recovered Muslim. No problem. I, I say my name is Bosch and I'm a recovered Muslim. I did my, a speech in 2011. And everyone's like, hello, Bosch. You know, it's pretty funny. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was I, I was raised by um, quote unquote moderate Albanian Muslim parents in the Bronx, New York. And uh, when I say, you know, moderate, the Jew hatred was hardcore. Uh, the mistreatment of women hardcore. Uh, every woman in my family was beaten by her husband, brother, his father. Um, a, a, a real hatred of America, but then also ambivalence. They loved it, hated it. It was too free. Um, Jews were the scum of the earth. And the one thing they maintained more than anything, you know, in terms of practice, though, was not eating pork. Okay. And that's where pigment comes in. It's like it was the most vile, disgusting creature on earth. If it popped up on the TV in some capacity, my mother had to recoil. It was, you know, just, okay. you know, if someone bought the wrong bologna, they got their ass kicked. My yeah, I remember, I remember you saying yeah. that on, on a yeah. show somewhere. Like you, your cousin bought the wrong bologna and got, she got, got beaten her, for it. She got beaten for it. And, it, you know, it made a lesson of everyone else. Like, just don't get the wrong bologna. 
Um, and then, you know, but in terms, in terms of mo moderate Islam, we went to a mosque only once, twice a year. We, we lived in the Bronx. We, we visited this uh, Brooklyn mosque, and it was an Arab, an Arab imam who spoke Arabic. We didn't understand a word he said. We followed every move he made, all uh, Akbar. And, uh, and then my cousins were farting, burping, making all these sounds. And I was, I was a pretty serious kid. And I, I said, that, that's really bad. Looking back at it now, they were giving it the kind of uh, respect, I guess, it deserved. But at the time, I was like, you know, th this, is, this is bad. I mean, this is supposed to be a serious thing here. And not that I was a serious Muslim, but I thought, you know, it's supposed to be a, we go here once, twice a year, or something worthwhile. We all get dressed up and everyone gets their new fresh socks with the tags hanging out still, you know, with tube socks. And, um, and I remember, I just remember right now, actually, just funny, outside the mosque, we're, we're standing there and a the cousin's father comes up. I, I don't think he was my uncle. He was my uncle through my marriage, something like that, through a marriage. But anyway, he started praising me and about how Hitler would have loved me because of my skin color and hair color. Most of my cousins are dark hair, brown hair. Some are blonde and blue eyes, but most of them are brown hair. And I was like, and I knew that Hitler is evil from school. Was he saying this in like a positive way? Like, Oh, absolutely positive. In front of everyone, you know, ah. Oh. Hitler would have loved you because I look, you know, quote unquote, I'm not, I'm, I have brown, you know, brown eyes and, and light skin and red hair. I'm not even an Aryan looking, right. but he was like, wow. And that's, that's the thing. You know, there was an admiration for Hitler in my household, um, cousins across, you know, across our family. And why? Because he killed more Jews than anyone. And that's why I call him you know, Islam's favorite infidel. I made a cartoon about that. Yep. Um, and it's just, it's, it's a sick, twisted thing to speak about it. And w that's why I think a lot of ex-Muslims who I know of don't never even mention the fact that there's an admiration. I think even they're ashamed of it. It's just, it's so, you know, disgusting, but it's true. It's a fact. Average Muslims admire Hitler. Average non-observant Muslims admire Hitler. That's a fact. Uh, he was uh, the one guy who almost wiped out the problem in the world according to Islam, yeah. Jews. And Muslims were in bed with Hitler in World War II. Hitler fancied Islam a masculine religion. You know, there was a, almost a mutual admiration uh, between both ideologies. Now, you've, you've said that um, you don't necessarily, you're not, you don't talk a lot about average Muslims generally. You're not right. out there railing against average Muslims who are going about their day doing their thing. And, um, right. But but you do make a distinction. Um, you, you make sure to call the enemy here Islam, not any of these other words like uh, Islamism or radical Islam. Can you talk a little bit about why you do that? Because I think a lot of uh, people, um, both on the left, but also, frankly, a lot of, I'll call them uh, cowards uh, on, yeah. on the right, are afraid to just say, well, the problem's Islam. They have to have right. some different word for it. Tell us about why you do that. Well, because it's true. Uh, Islam sanctions jihad. It sanctions white beating. It sanctions the murder of individuals. It sanctions uh, pedophilia. It sanctions all of these horrific things that we're seeing across the Islamic world. And when they say, well, and that's why people link, you know, latch onto ISIS. ISIS is a problem. ISIS, no. ISIS is a, a symptom of Islam. ISIS is part of Islam. ISIS, and when you got guys like, uh, Majid Nawaz, I think Majid Nawaz, that's the name. I can't stand these Islamic reformers. I think they're liars. When Majid Nawaz says Muhammad would have uh, fought ISIS, Muhammad would have led ISIS. Yeah. Muhammad would have says, I have a ready-made army. Let's go. That's what he would have done. Muhammad began jihad. The first thing Muhammad did when he got in power was kill his critics, a poet and a writer. Just kill them. That was the first thing he did. And then he went after you know others and began wars and spread Islam through the sword. There are swords of Muhammad, you know, in, I think, um, in Medina, I believe, in Saudi Arabia. There are swords, actual swords that are on display. Whether they were his, his actual swords or not, whether he even existed or not, it doesn't matter. Muslims believe he did. Uh, that's what's a prophet doing with a sword. Right. Well, you know, and, and we talk, why? we criticize the, uh, we criticize the Catholic Church for the Crusades. Um, but yes, we, do. we rarely don't, we I rarely hear that the Crusades were really um, a re—they they were a, a, reaction a reaction to uh, Muslim invasion. 
Um, they were. And and you know, I'm not I'm not uh, forgiving the the methods of the Crusades and that kind of thing. But and they went overboard, no doubt about it. Absolutely. But it was a reaction to to aggressive uh, Muslim invasion and and murder. And the Pope at the time was rational enough to say, guys, we have to do something or else we're going to be wiped out. Right. We have no choice here. And he was, you know, I, despite his religion, despite love thy enemy, despite all that stuff that they tell themselves that have, you know, destroyed our society in, in a lot of ways, they had to fight. And so it lasted about 200 years. The jihads were going on for three to 400 years before that, and they're still going on now. And we still get people a thousand, bring up the Crusades. The Crusades are the jihads in Islam. They've last for over a thousand, four hundred years. Right. And when I say Islam, again, I can't stand these terms. Even when objectives use Islamic totalitarianism, it's just an eleven, you know, eleven right. syllables. I say less syllables, more truth. Um, <laughs> it's important because when I was raised Muslim, it was Islam. Uh, the Ayatollah was pushing Islam in Iran. Osama bin Laden was pushing Islam. I never heard an quote-unquote Islamist call himself an Islamist. Uh, they call themselves jihadists. They call themselves Muslims. Uh, Osama bin Laden call, call himself a Muslim. Right. Never so they said, don't I, use the term, is your point? No. They, then I am an Islamist who is fighting for Islamism to secure Islam for the world. No, they don't speak that language. That's our language. Why? Because we want to pretend that we're dealing with something that we're not dealing with. Also, I really resent when uh, atheists say, you know, we got a real problem with Christianity, Judaism, and Islamism. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You just said Christianity, Judaism, and Islamism. Right. You know, you're talking about two religions, and then you bring up this ideology that is allegedly deviant from Islam. No, you got to be consistent here. That's right. why guys like Bill Maher is consistent. Yeah, he's an idiot leftist, but on this issue, he's great. Yeah. He's consistently, you know, condemnatory of religion. And those kind of atheists, I respect. So, uh, so let me ask you a question because I'm an atheist, and uh, as you know, and, yes. uh, you know, I, I hear a lot of counter arguments or early people trying to argue against this criticism of Islam by saying, well, Christianity says a lot of bad things. There's, you, and they'll, you know, they'll open the Bible and they'll point to some stuff and they'll right. say, look, this is bad and this is bad. And so um, there's really no, I think the message is there's really no fundamental difference. They're just different religions. And, and we're, you know, you're just talking about an extreme element and Christianity could have extreme elements too. So why are you sure. bringing it up? Well, you know, Muhammad was a warlord. Muhammad began an idea. Uh, he began a doctrine of warfare called jihad. There's no other religion that has a doctrine of warfare. But when I when I tell some friends that, I say, "Oh yeah, Judaism has." I said, "What's it called?" They're stumped. I right. said, "Is it called jihad?" I said, "There's no jihad in Christianity or Judaism or Buddhism or any other religion. This is part and parcel of the religion. This is how Islam spread. Without jihad, there would be no Islam. Islam, you know, Arabs or whether it was Muhammad who invent who uh, found Islam." They wanted to get in on the religion racket. And he said, you know what, we have to get our own, but we're gonna have a little innovation here. You know, as soon as you know Allah gave him the green light, you can actually kill those who defy you. Right. That's when he said, oh, okay, conveniently. And he started killing and started raiding the Jewish caravans. It's different, it's fundamentally different. I mean, on, in the basis of, of war, what are, are, are Christians at war with civilization today? Are Jews at war? You can say, well, they are, in a more subtle way, they're trying to get into. Okay, but we can do, we we can fight that. Right, they don't bomb people can, as much. They don't bomb people. We can argue. We can have battles, intellectual battles. We can. Uh, with Islam, they've decided to. They don't want to argue. They've decided to kill or submit. Period. Yep. That's the religion. That's the core of it. Unlike any other religion. And yeah, there. All religions have bloody, you know, past. And this is today, 2019. It's a big difference. Yeah. And the nature of Christians also in, in terms of the nature of the average Muslim, the average Muslim, again, as I said, doesn't like Jews to, to hating Jews. And if you're a Muslim who loves Jews, who loves Israel, who loves America, who loves women, who loves dogs, loves bacon, he's not Muslim. Which is why I say, you know, uh, a good Muslim by our standards is a bad Muslim or a non-Muslim by Islamic st uh, standards. Uh, they're not Muslim in any way that Islam would identify them. So I can't stand when people say, well, I know that nice Muslim, as if he defines Islam. You know, that's why my main problem is the ideology and it's true believers. That's the issue. That's the enemy. We've got to be honest about it. And by saying Islam is not a problem, 
uh, even even some objectivists, you know, say that it's no, no, it's 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 a political militant uh, ideology. Islam is political. Islam is militant right. by nature. It is totalitarian by nature. To say totalitarian Islam is is, is to say radical Nazism, militant communism. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> That's a it's good just, point. It's, yeah, it's just by they're inherently evil, uh, inherently militaristic, inherently political. Uh, you know, uh, there is no separation between mosque and state in Islamic countries, zero. So that's a None. great distinction that I don't think people often bring up. Islam's not just a religion, it's also a political ideology mixed in. Absolutely. Good, mixed in. No right? doubt about it. And then some, some religionists though will say, see, it's a, it's a political ideology disguised as religion. No, it is religion right. and politics and law and you know uh, war doctrine and all this. It's, it's totalitarian in the true sense where it wants to control everything around it and everyone around it. Right. Uh, whether they're whether they're Muslim or not, and that's the whole thing. Also, it's like Muhammad's words are not only supposed to be for Muslims; it's supposed to be for everyone, for me, for you, for everyone listening to this. That's the that's the real, the scary thing. It's like uh, it's it's after everyone. Yeah, and I've heard you describe. I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, so forgive me if I screwed up. But I liked your description. I've heard you say something to the effect of uh, Muslim uh, or Islam is as is is like the religion where the bad guy won. Right. It's right. Uh, it's not right. it's not that Jesus didn't win. The bad guy won. Right. Um, and Mohammed and was you know, a horrible, cre a horrible, horrible person. Right. Absolutely. Right. And, and, and that's why I say, you know, the, uh, my, you know, a world where the bad guy won. That's, that's right. Yes. And it's like a bad movie where or a good movie, you know, where if it's done well, even like uh, the last Avengers movie where I don't know if you I don't have any spoilers here, but the bad guy wins. Right. It's a it's a horrific consequence. Like wow, evil won, and uh, that's what happened to the Islamic world. You have human beings, like us, under this ideology, and it's in a part of their being that they are so limited by what they think, what they feel, what they can see about themselves, about life, that it is tragic beyond belief. Not just with women, everyone under it, the billion point one point five billion, whatever they all say. Uh, it's incredibly tragic just on that basis alone it's like um, they're, they're they've never been allowed to meet themselves in a real way to meet their own individuality to meet their own you know talents they're not allowed to express those talents which is why you know when when the girl from Saudi Arabia can can come can be saved and brought to the West I think it's beautiful sure. I think it's great uh, and and again I am for immigration but I'm not for mass Muslim immigration in time of war uh, where Western countries are bringing in them by the millions. It, it, to me, it's irrational. It is destructive. There will be jihadists among them, guaranteed. Individuals will die on the streets of those countries because of these policies. I think it's horrific. I think, but individual cases like that, absolutely. Sure. Ex-Muslims on the run, bring them in. Yeah. Absolutely. Of course, of course. Now, um, just uh, another uh just I'll play devil's advocate for for another question here. I often sure. also hear people say, well, it's not Islam. It's that the U.S. foreign policy has been bombing people in the Middle East. And they're just this is a backlash and they're just using the Quran to justify their uh, resentment and backlash for all the innocents that the U.S. has killed over the decades. And that's a strong argument for a lot of people because there's not denying that the U.S. has killed innocent people in the Middle sure. East. So no doubt about it. So what's, the, what's your thought there? Well, first of all, that's war. Innocents die in war. But also, our, our government is stupid in the way it fights war. It goes into Iraq instead of Iran. It, it targets Iraq instead of the Saudis, who were both Iran and Saudi Arabia were in on 9-11 to some extent. They were. They are the greatest you know, sponsor of terrorism on Earth, sponsors of jihad on Earth. And... I really believe, and this is a theory that I have that no one almost buys, but I'll, I'll express it anyway. I think George Bush looked around the Middle East, said, hey, there's a guy with a suit. He doesn't have a turban, doesn't have robes, he's, he's not that religious, he's not really liked by his neighbors. He has a mustache, he looks like a real, like a, like a commie. That's the safest target we're gonna do. I really think it's that stupid and that cheap. I really believe it. That, that's that's pretty brain dead. Yeah, but I think that's the case because after 9-11, remember what he said, Islam is peace. He was flanked by two members of CARE, which, which are our enemies. Yeah, CARE is horrible. He was, yeah. uh, he, he was pathetic, Bush. And I think he did that because it was the safest target. It wasn't a true target. It wasn't the target. It was the safest one. And uh, yeah, so we bombed indiscriminately at times, stupidly, 
uh, we have to be smart in what and who we target, why we target. And yeah, there will be casualties. There, there will be uh, people who will die by mistake. And that's just too bad sometimes. That's war. When you have Osama bin Laden with a group of people, a dozen people, and Clinton says, oh, I can't kill him because I'll kill innocents. I'm sorry. There were no innocents in that room. There are no innocents with Osama bin Laden, who is a mass murderer. There are no innocents there. This is war. You kill him. So that's, uh, I, I think we're stupid in the way we, we fight the war. We don't focus, we don't tell the truth. And that's why we fall into these, uh, you know, long term 17 year wars, quote unquote, which are, we're doing everything we can to not fight war while pretending we're fighting war. And it's just, to me, it's just, it's pathetic. And we will kill a lot of people unnecessarily. It's stupid on, on that level. But those who argue that also want us to, to not go to war at all. So, so I don't that, trust that So that's my argument. question. So if you think, yeah. if, if we became completely isolationist and just withdrew it from the Middle East completely, uh, your argument is that that wouldn't stop this uh, Absolutely Islamic not. attacks and th no. that wouldn't stop the spread of Islam. And, and, uh, and no, and, and Muslims would take that as we're afraid. Victory, yeah. They, they always interpret everything, you know, to their be benefit. Oh, we scared them off like we scared the Russians off. Now we're, now we're going to go stronger. And again, every single time a person in New York and Idaho and in, 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 in France and Paris dies by an individual, lone wolf, quote unquote, he is part of the enemy that's at war with us. It's a fact. I mean, we, we know that um, every single time it happens, 10 people here, 20 people here. There are 30 plus thousand attacks since 9-11. Uh, there's a, a, a website called the devolution of peace .com and they they estimate them every single day, five people here, two people there in Nairobi and all across the world. And this is the 17 year war that it is never ending. Why? Because our government refused to end it. When Bush said this is going to be a long war, our government said, OK, we'll make sure it's a long war. Right. Doesn't have to be, but they made sure it is. Right. Right. So what do you think um, what, what do you think the government should do? What would your would your solution wouldn't be, I assume, it wouldn't be to outlaw Islam or anything like that. No. What would your solution be? Uh... Be honest. Uh, be honest. Uh, stop lying to the American people. Stop lying to the West. Stop telling us Islam is peace. It's, it's a bullshit lie. Stop it. Stop it. Every time someone of, you know, so a Muslim kills someone, recognize it as part of the war on the West. Don't call him uh, a mental, you know, he has mental problems. He's a lone wolf. Acknowledge it and then start bringing it back to the countries that support this, right. bringing it back to, to the countries who sponsor this, Saudi Arabia, Iran in particular, those two, those are the big ones. Yep. And, uh, you know, whether we're going to bomb them to smithereens today, you know, that's up to the military people, but we have to stop lying and s stop sword dancing with the Saudis like Trump stupidly did last year yep. and tell and tell us Islam's is great. It's a lie. And then, and then go cancel the iftar dinner in the White House uh, last year. Have it this year. Tell us Islam's is great again, while well, while his fans think he's a kind of again Hurt Wilders about this issue. He's not. Right. So the first thing, stop lying. First thing, when you stop lying, you start seeing things a little more honestly. When when you stop lying, the enemy might stop lying to us about what Islam means and tell us, oh, it means peace. Say, well, I know that's not true. Why would you be lying about that? And so on. And stop having these meetings. Stop having these dinners at the White House. Stop, you know, pretending that the Saudis are our friends. Right. I have this one cartoon. You know, the the the, the difference between Saudi Arabia and Iran. I have a, a, a Ayatollah screaming death to America, and have a, a, a crown prince whispering, or a, a, a word balloon like a, a bubble, a thought balloon. Yeah. You know, death to America. Right. They hate us. They but they 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 will tell us whatever we want to hear. Uh, they're a little more crafty than the Iranians. I was going to say they're smart, um, basically. Yeah, I mean, in, yeah, in, in terms of war, in terms of uh, uh, ideological battles against one's enemies, and our politicians want to hear that. Yep. Oh, they they love hearing that. Oh, yeah, they're our friends. You know, great. No, they're our enemies, but they're a little crafty. I think maybe it's good for people to understand a little bit more about your background, Bosch, because you touched on a, a couple things. Um, you touched on the the Garland and the and the Draw Muhammad contest. Um, so maybe let's start there. You won a contest uh, for drawing Muhammad. Um, yeah. And at the award ceremony, something happened. You want to tell us about that contest and, and what you did sure. there and what happened? 
I've been drawing Muhammad since uh, 2005, 2006, after the Danish cartoonists. I, even growing up as a Muslim, I wasn't even aware of the prohibition about drawing Muhammad. That's how, you know, that's how uninterested I was in, in Islam. And so that was a revelation to me. I was like, wait a minute, you can't draw, no one outside of Islam, Oof, sorry, no one can draw Islam, sorry, Muslim, uh, Muhammad, not Muslims, not anyone. I'm like, that's ridiculous. Right. So what did I do? Naturally, as an American, as a free man, I drew Muhammad. Sure. And I drew him on the shoulder of Pigman's um, arch enemy, Super Jihad. Uh, you, you know those those drawings where they have an angel and devil? Yeah. I n knocked out the angel and only had the devil, Muhammad, on his shoulder. And uh, I drew that, and then I started drawing him a little more and more frequently. And then Molly Norris uh, from the from the, the Seattle Times, a cartoonist, uh, created uh, everybody draw Muhammad Day. She was a naive liberal, who th you know assumed that this is a, a safe thing to do and she was the fbi went to her she disappeared since you know, she, she's been gone since 2010 under a different name and uh, she she lost her nerve you know in a lot of ways i don't think she understood what she was getting getting into i understood at least because especially, especially after the, the danish cartoonists were, were threatened with death so then again and again every time something happened uh the offices of charlie hebdo were firebombed i think it was 2010 2011 or maybe 2012, and I was like, whoa, so I, I made a cartoon specifically, you know, all, over that, and then uh, the worst thing, you know, one of the worst things happened since 9-11, for me as a cartoonist and as a human being in the West, you know, a dozen people were slaughtered over Muhammad cartoons right. by Muslims, and then uh, Pamela Geller, um, she heard about this one event in Garland, Texas, that was uh, Muslims got together and they had a Defend the Prophet conference in Garland, Texas in a few months, I think a month or two after the Charlie Hebdo massacre. And they were defending Muhammad. They were defending his right not to be cartooned there. And they were walking over the dead bodies of a dozen individuals who were slaughtered over it. And Pamela Geller said, you know what? We're going to have the same. We're going to have a conference at, at the same place about drawing Muhammad. And I was like, that's completely right up my alley. I mean, I've been drawing Muhammad for free for years and getting a lot of grief for it, getting death threats over it. So I, said, I might as well get paid for it. $10,000. Yeah, $10,000, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And I figured I had, I had a good chance. I drew him at that point dozens of times, different ways, really cartoony, you know, horrifically. and uh, But not obscenely. I don't, I, don't, I don't get into the obscene art. I just, just not my thing. People tell me, have a goat raping him, have a pig raping him, have him raping uh, Aisha. I'll let other people do that. They're free to do that. I just that's, that's just not my thing artistically. Yeah. So uh, I, I was drawing, and I said, "Wait a minute. How about if I have him threatening me as I draw him?" And I thought that was, that was a pretty cool take. So then I drew the hell out of the drawing, made it as good as I as I could, uh, handed it in, and I think within a few months, what was it, March or April, I won the People's Choice Award. And then Pamela Geller contacted me, said we'd like you to be at the event uh, for the announcement of the winner. And I said, okay, but did I win? I want, I, I want to know before I go, because I can't tell you, but I want you to be there. I said, okay. Right. So I went there. I, I was in Texas, uh, I think a year before that. And so it was my second time in Texas. Uh, went there. Um, Pamela Geller walks up to me and says, uh, how, how does she put it? Uh, you're going to get a big ass check. And it was literally, you know, um, it was a huge check. She, she called it the the money shot when, when we took a picture with, with all of us together. Robert Spencer, Pamela Geller, Herb Wilders, the only politician on earth uh, who actually speaks honestly about Islam. The only one, even though people mistake Trump for Herb Wilders, where, where Trump will call Islam great, uh, Herb Wilders will call it evil. So it's a big difference between well, the two. We can talk people... in a moment about Trump's reaction yeah. to, to that event, which oh, was horrific, or just a horrific it's pathetic, reaction. But yeah. Pathetic. Um, no, it, it was like a, a leftist is what it was. But anyway, uh, so we go there and uh, I'm announced as a winner. I do my little speech and I mentioned one thing. I said, why do you think we have this kind of this kind of security here? Because Islam does not mean peace. And within a half hour, I think, boom, we were told we were under under fire. Yeah. And I was the one thing I was worried about. And, and I'm not uh, I'm not reckless, but I said, I have a I have a, I have a flight. I want to get back home and I got to get there in time. They said, you got to come with us. I said, okay. So I went back uh, backstage and we were put in this one area and uh, I was flanked by two guards at the entire time. 
and one of them told me just just for record update that there were there were there were two guys who came to shoot up the place and they got their heads blown off and i had this pump fist of righteous like justice i was like you know and i tweeted not long after i said they came to kill us and die for it justice and that was used as a headline for i think some dallas new, new, newspapers and some others i think even an indian newspaper it was so great we go there we celebrate freedom i won twelve thousand five hundred dollars by the way because pebble was kind enough to say you know what you won the people's choice award as well so here's two thousand five hundred dollars for that and for the kind of subs it was just wow yeah and we celebrate free speech in a kick-ass way and then two jihadists get their heads blown off wow and people told me it's so terrible what happened i said terrible this was free speech on display we showed who we are the enemy showed who they were and they're dead for it yep and it was it was, it was just beautiful so and, uh, i still claimed responsibility just to be clear these these were like yeah. two these were two people they yelled allahu akbar uh yeah. they came in ISIS with uh, a bunch had, of rifles had, and pistols right they had, they had isis flag with them yep um, and the fbi tragically we found out later the fbi knew what they were up to there was an undercover fbi agent working with them telling them to tear up texas we found us out in the court proceedings in the transcripts so it's even darker and worse than, than we thought our government understood that these guys were, were going to do what they did and didn't do anything to stop them yeah I, in fact i was i was reading apparently the fbi agent was uh was dressed in middle eastern garb yes, and was. almost was shot by the swat team he had to say he was an yes. fbi agent Yes. Um, yes. He, he was arrested uh, a few blocks away. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and actually, this led to um, this is actually also related to the uh, ATF. Um, the there's a there was an ATF uh, issue with them secretly letting people sell guns to people who shouldn't have guns right. because they wanted right. to trace right. them down. I forget what that was called, but uh, it was related to the Fast and Furious stuff. Y- yes, it was. You're um, right. And then one of one of the guys, I think the third jihadist, was in I think Carolina. And they were thinking about the Super Bowl or the Garland attack. They were weighing their options. Yep. So these guys were going to kill no matter what. Yep. Our cartoon contest did not just, you know, did, did not just make them wake up and say, oh, now we're going to kill. These guys were on the kill. They were, they wanted to kill. And they said, okay, this is, I guess, a softer target here. So let's go with this. Yep. And they were wrong. I mean, Pamela Geller made sure 40 to, 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 40 to, to $50,000 on security. And there were a lot of undercover uh, guards also. Yeah. And we had a SWAT team, a dozen members of a SWAT team. Yeah, the SWAT team was there. Yeah, yeah. and you look at the, the pictures of the event. You got a guy in full SWAT gear looking at these paintings. It's a gallery of art, an art gallery. <laughs> and if Islam meant peace, that wouldn't be necessary. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, it's, it, 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 I think of Israel when I see that because it's, it's, a, it's right. a kind of Western-esque, sort of Western yes. country that you see people walking around with AK-47s right. with. It's, that's unusual. Yeah, down the street, cafes, right, right, yeah. right. Um, but it's it's so it's so weird. And so then so then the response, I guess, uh, Facebook banned you for for um, yes. being a victim of a terrorist attack. And right, uh, <laughs> and, right, right. <laughs> you, almost, you, you almost were murdered. Out, you know, out with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then um, and then Trump, who I, this is prior to his presidential aspirations. Um, but Trump actually expressed sentiment that I heard a lot of people express, um, yes. which I just find. Uh, it's really it's un-American and like just, yeah. just like ridiculous. Pathetic is a great word. Yeah, yeah. Tell us what he said. He said, um, "How how did he put it?" I drew a cartoon. I said, "Donald Trump's position on the Muhammad cartoon contest. It's him in prayer, right? You know, pros- prostrated." He said, basically, along lines were, "Why are they drawing Muhammad out there? What what are they doing out there? You know, she's pathetic, uh, Pamela Geller." And he says, uh, "You know, they really angered a lot of people." As if that, as right. if an, an American gives a damn about savages being angered over cartoons. Right. And he, and not just that, but he doubled, tripled, quadrupled down on TV, on radio, on Neil Cavuto. And then one of the most horrific things he said was about after, it was a Charlie Hebdo uh, massacre. I think they were uh, honoring the, the, the cartoonist in New York somewhere. And he said, they taunted and taunted as if he doesn't taunt. And look right. where it got them. And look where it got them. Yeah, that's go- that's ghoulish. It's, it's that's victim blaming. Yeah, it's um, unbelievable. 
and yeah. he uh, he smeared them. He smeared us. He smeared them. He said nothing about the attackers. Right. He said nothing about the jihadists. He said nothing about Islam. He bent over and sold out free speech. That's what he did. And Bill O'Reilly, the same crap. Laura Ingram, the same crap. As in, you don't really got to draw Muhammad. Really, when human beings are threatened with murder for cartoons, you really got to draw Muhammad. I was going to say, that's it's weird because the, the kind of principled free speech response right that the people who protect the freedom of speech are the people who have the opposite reaction of that which is like right which is exactly what you did right I, yes you can't draw me that's why i draw you like I, the, I, it, I, it's a it's an issue of defiance in the face of evil we're in we're at war and enemies telling us we're going to kill you for any other reason that we, that we can think of but you know what right now we're going to say that if you draw muhammad we're going to kill you for that and what do you do as a free man you say can i curse on here you can curse all you want man you say <laughs> Fuck you. I will draw him. I can't draw you. That's why I draw you. That's why I draw you. It's a, right. uh, it's, you know, and it, it's not me yelling. It's not me screaming. It's not me putting a knife up. It's, it's just saying, I can't draw you. That's why I draw you. It's a simple little act of defiance. I'm not a soldier. I'm not a warrior. Uh, this, I, I'm a cartoonist and I want to live in a world where you can draw Muhammad. And the kind of world that, where you can't draw Muhammad, it's a hellhole. Right. I, you know, I want to do my own individual part to make sure that this part of the world does not become that hellhole, because everyone is acting in a lot of ways. Uh, they've submitted to Islam. They're de facto Muslims in this case. Yep. They're saying, well, I won't draw Muhammad. Well, therefore, you've submitted right. uh, to evil and I will never do that. I mean, I've drawn him now 200 over 200 times. I have a new book coming out called Peaceful Death Threats. I have about 60 new Muhammad cartoons. And they're different than any of the ones I've drawn, and they're pretty. Uh, it's fun. It, it, it's a fun thing to do. Yeah, it, I, to me, anyone who supports the freedom of speech, this is one of those obvious issues that you support right away. It's like, okay, well, it's a flash. Where's it yes. being? Yeah, where's it being attacked? Yep. You can't draw Muhammad. Draw Muhammad. Support people right. who draw Muhammad. You know, I support free speech, but you don't yep. support free speech. Right. It's over. Um, and what politicians should have done post uh, post Garland is posted the uh, cartoon to say, look, I mean, I agree with, you know, but this is free speech. Right. This is free speech. Right. When it's not the point of you can say just by anything when you are threatened with murder uh, by an entire group of people, that's free speech to say, no, we can do that in our in our in our culture, in our society and civilization. We can do right. that. Yeah. So let's talk about the left for a minute, because, uh, you know, one thing that I think any anyone, even who's not really paying attention, maybe kind of a, a normie in the middle or whatever, kind of observing culture. One thing that I think should strike uh, people as odd is if they notice it, is that the feminists don't criticize Islam. Um, right. Why is that? And what the hell's going on in the left, in your opinion? Well, they're cowards. They're flat out cowards. They pick and choose their enemies. They pick and choose who they go after. Uh, they, they they will go to a church to condemn them outside the church. They'll never go outside a mosque. Um, a woman is raped. Uh, there's a gang rape in uh, whatever, somewhere across the world. They won't go after him because they're afraid because they're cowards. They have no conviction. Uh, the only feminists who I like are the ones in France. And I forgot what their name is, but they go, they run on stage you know, rip off their shirts with their breasts and they have these, these, these sayings, they're actual feminists, right. you know, they're actually, they criticize Islam. Uh, those are the ones that are worthwhile, but they're a small minority, a very small minority. And the left, I, I think in the last year or two, they lost their minds. They, they, they ripped their mask off. You got uh, Cortez, right? Yep. This is who, this is who the left is. That's who Nancy Pelosi is. That's why they look at her and say, shut up, shut up. Right, you're telling, you're giving, our giving secrets us away. away. Stop giving us away. <laughs> we have to do that behind closed doors. That's how we win, you know. And that's why any evil, any evil ideology cannot be honest, because it can't get away with it. If Muhammad went up to the Jews and Christians at his time, I'm gonna kill all you guys, and you know, he'd probably be killed, you know, in self-defense. Even though he did do that for a little while. If uh, if if the left came out on their platforms and campaigning the way I think Cortez across the board, they 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 would be they would not be a viable party. They have to lie. Uh, evil ideologies have to lie. Uh, and yeah, so I, I think it's especially since Trump, not that Trump's a right winger. Trump has, has all been 
on the left for decades, right? Yeah. And then he I, said, he's well, like a pragmatist I, sort of. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah, exactly. He says, you know what? Uh, uh, is, it, is it popular to be a liberal today? I'll be liberal. I'll be a Democrat, whatever. And he says, I probably can't win in the Democrat Party. I probably might be able to win in the Republican Party. So I'll do that for now. And then he'll praise socialized medicine and praise Islam. It's like, right. and his fans pretend that he never said that. Oh, he didn't say that. Said, yeah, yes, he did. Just pay attention. I pay more attention to him than, than, than you do when you're a fan of his. Right. But yeah, the left uh, ripped off their mask um, post, post 9-11, post Charlie Hebdo. Uh, they are not for free speech. They are anti-free speech. They are not for liberalism in the, in the true sense, and not for class liberalism. They, um, you know, the hardcore evil left took over the the uh, Democrat Party. It took over the liberals in a lot of ways. And there's, as you say, there's almost nothing left. There's a Dershowitz, right? This rare individual who's honest, who's actually for uh, the Garland contest. He was on Megyn Kelly during the time a few years ago speaking highly of her and her debate about it because she was debating uh, O'Reilly and others about it and she was she was strong about it and I was hoping she was strong enough because I sent her the cartoon I said hey just show it man just show it you know and ultimately um, John Stossel showed it he had me on a on a free speech special he showed it a number of times and the cool thing also was that he showed it they intercut it with a member of care so when the member of care was watching the show to see herself, she had to watch my cartoon. She was exposed. <laughs> she was exposed to it, and Muslims who told, "Hey, I'll be on Stossel." They were all exposed to my, you know, horrific cartoon. And also, there was a point where the left. One of the other reasons that they're not for free speech, uh, other proof is that uh, post Garland, I was invited from every channel on the Fox News, CNN, NBC, and after uh, what's her name. Um, what was her name? Greta Van Susteren had me on her show. She was supposed to show the cartoon. I had the cartoon. I sent it to her producer, everything. She, she decided the last minute not to show it. So I said, you know what? If you're going to invite me on the show, bring my cartoon or, or I'm not going to be on. And then CNN contacted me. I told him, I said, well, you, you're, you're going to have me on for my cartoon, right? Well, I, I want my cartoon on about it. I want to talk about why you want me on. I'm right. not here for my good looks. I'm not here for anything else. I'm here for my cartoon. Oh, no, we, we can't do that. So I lost, you know, chances, opportunities to be on TV. Who gives a damn if, if, if they can be serious about my appearance? Right. And then that and also there's a, a group called the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund. I've been a, a card carrying member of it for over a decade. Uh, there's supposed to be a, a, a group in defense of free speech for cartoonists, right? And they have a, a, an issue called uh, free speech under fire, cartoonists under fire. Okay. And I'm looking for me and I don't find me at all <laughs> and i'm like i contacted him i said are you serious i was literally under fire you're talking about these uh cartoonists who are in in, in alabama with some you know problem with something i said i was literally right. under fire and you chose so i cut, cut them off condemned them publicly i couldn't believe it um so yeah they are not for free speech they're, they're anti-free speech i mean when you say they they will say fuck america is free speech Fuck Islam is hate speech. Right. That's what they. That's, that's what a they great tell you. point. Yeah, and with with a straight face, they'll they'll tell you that. Well, we can't. You know, there's no way to go around that. Yeah. You're either for free speech or you're not. It's not. There is no such. such there is no such thing as hate speech anyway. Right. It's a. It's it, it, it's a. It's a construct made by anti-free speech people to try to get away with shutting people down that they hate. That's it. You yeah. know, it's a uh, hate speech. Is free speech, quote unquote, hate speech is free speech. Right, absolutely. Could tell tell us a little bit about the comic book industry because I think um, the normal normal people don't understand it. But I, I did have someone on the show, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago who was talked about Comics Gate a little bit and mm -hmm. uh, and the kind of basically social justice warriors having taken over a lot of the publishing houses there. Like you've got this this uh, comic book series called Pigman, which we can talk about in a minute, and yeah. why. Like, how's the reaction been to that? And what's it like to be trying to publish as someone who's anti-Islam? Let me give you one example. Um, a number of years ago, I was going to two, two conventions and I met a lot of cartoonists. We used to have, you know, get togethers after the conventions. We sold our words, go to our bars and drink and talk comics. We all love comics. That's what we had in common. And I met a lot of good friends like that over the years. So after I, you know, I, I sent word out about Pigman, I go to the next convention and I'm about to walk up and shake hands with the people that I know and they literally turn around and walk away. Literally turn around. I was stunned actually. 
No, I'm not. They wouldn't no, even I, shake I, I your hand. To, they wouldn't shake my hand. They turned around. I was I was about to walk up to them and say, hey, hey, you know, because we see we see each other two, three times a year at conventions. And I was friends with them. And we used to hang out and have dinner and have talks. And they completely shunned me, completely shunned me after the word got out that I was doing uh, working on the anti-Jihad, anti-Islam comic. And that's one example of the left and, 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 and the reaction. They have now, for the last five or six years, Marvel and DC has been publishing Muslim superhero comics. There's a, a Muslim Green Lantern who, um, his origins was that 9-11 happens and his family is crying, their Muslim family, they're all crying over the attacks, which doesn't sound, you know, true. Right. Um, and then they're getting abused by the locals and they're being called scumbags and terrorists and all that. And then he becomes a terrorist and for some reason, he has one of the most powerful weapons in the universe, the Green Lantern Ring. He still carries a gun with him. Why? I don't know why. It's a strange thing that the writer, you know, created. Yeah. And then you have Miss Miss Marvel in Marvel Comics. She adopted another hero. This is what they do also. They have gay characters, black characters, Hispanic characters, Muslim characters, and they always adopt an, a pre-established uh, character because they don't trust these characters to to stand on their own. Right. They don't trust them, and these are the leftists behind it that they don't trust them. Not the audience necessarily, but the, the actual people behind it. So they said, you know what? Let's have a character. Let's have her adopt another character's identity. And she'll be a Muslim, right? And we'll pretend that she's not really Muslim. She's not, it's not a, a logical comic, but she's on the cover, first issue with the Hadith. The Hadith is the uh, extra books in terms of uh, Islam. It's the, uh, it's the uh, religious text outside of the Quran. Uh, so that's a little more serious than your average Muslim. M Muslim will probably read the Quran or just have the Quran. She's, she's a little more serious, so she has it on, on on the cover. And then they try to attract people to say, hey, she's, she's, she's just average American. She likes bacon. So she's at a deli smelling bacon through a glass, which you can't do. But anyway, right. mm, infidel meat, infidel meat. And it's a Muslim, a leftist turned Muslim, by the way, post 9-11 leftist turned Muslim, which are the worst. Yeah. Uh, they're... they're it's like they said, oh, oh, oh shit, I better, I, better, I better submit now before they're going to get us, you know? I so think it's they just they, they view the intersectionality pyramid and they're like, how can I get higher in the hierarchy? I could, I could be she, trans and oh, maybe if I'm a Muslim, I'll be... Uh, and it worked. I mean, she's working for DC now, Marvel. She has novels. She's successful. And she's a shit writer. I, I try to become uh, a watchdog on the, on the series just to see after six issues, I couldn't anymore. It was just yeah. too boring and too bad. Yeah. So this is where they are. There are no superheroes taking on jihad in comics. Uh, in World War II, Batman, Superman, Cat Marvel, Wonder Woman, they all fought. Uh, they all uh, fought the Nazis, right? They all fought Nazis. They all fought the Japanese. Yeah. You have uh, Superman on the cover holding a Japanese uh, military leader and, and, uh, and uh, I think Stalin or someone else uh, over. Uh, and, then, and then you had actually uh, Hitler, Hitler. And you have Cat America literally punching Hitler. And now you have... Muslim superheroes with, with, without the reason, without the only reason we're talking about Islam, which is jihad. Right. You know, they live in a universe where there's no jihad. There's just good Muslims, right. and they're being abused by their locals in New, New Jersey. I mean, this is just bad. They're they're being mocked about their headscarves. So Where's say that again because there? I've heard you say this, and uh, I think it's it's a point that I didn't consider at all, but I think it really needs to be emphasized. You said the only reason we're talking about Islam is because of jihad. Right. That's the only reason. That's the only reason why in, in, in the 70s, that's the only reason why in the 80s, when all these attacks, that's the only reason why Salman Rushdie, you know, because there were threats against his life, because there was, there was jihad. That's the only reason Islam has not just distinguished itself enough in any way outside of being a threat to us. Right. There's no reason for us to like Islam, to respect Islam. There's none whatsoever. We don't talk about uh, Zoroastrians or Buddhists or Hindus. Zero. Right? We, we don't give a damn. No. There's, there, there's nothing in them that interests us. There's nothing in them that appeals to us. Nothing in them that, you know, they might have some kind of value that we say, yeah, I, I agree with that, with that particular idea. Sure, about sure. Every, every religion, I'm sure, has some sure. good things. No in doubt it. about yeah. it. Whereas Islam, uh, you know, the only good in Islam, in the Quran even, has been abrogated. There's yeah. a doctrine in Islam called the doctrine of abrogation. If a later verse contradicts an earlier verse, go with a later one. In the earlier verses, live and let live. You have your religion, we have ours. In the later verses, kill the infidels where you find them. That has been killed. That, that early verse has been deleted. 
Uh, so the, basically, the bottom line, last word on Islam is all out war for all time. That's the word. And that's the problem. And, and, and it's like, what, what was the issue that you want? Okay, yeah, the only reason we're talking about Islam is jihad. And oh, yeah. that's the only reason why there would be is Muslim superheroes to fight jihad, right? right? To, to fight those who are quote unquote perverted their religion. Why isn't Miss Marvel in the last five years going to Iran, going to Iraq, fighting ISIS? Why isn't she using her power to, to, to do this? Because they don't want to, they want to uh, showcase Islam, make it look good without dealing with the only issue that we only, the only issue that we have with Islam, which right. is jihad. Right. The only reason and that we're even talking about it is because the only reason of jihad. That's it. Yeah. There's no, the, again, they have not, they, they, the religion has not given us any other reason outside of fear of being killed uh, to pay it any attention. Right. Any attention whatsoever. It's a, it's a, it's a great point and I never hear it made. Um, and I'm also glad you talked about abrogation because I think for a lot of Christians, and even me, I'm a former Christian. I grew up uh, reading the Bible. I've probably read it five times in my life. Um, right. And, you know, on the surface, I can, uh, I can kind of, if I want to, I can put myself in in the Muslim, in their shoes, and think like, well, yeah, there are parts of the Bible that are pretty bad, and parts that are good. And like, which verse right. should I follow? The one, this right. bad one, or the good one? But um, Islam as a religion solves that problem with this concept yes. of abrogation. And so Absolutely. You, you, the, the, the contradictions, you go with the later one. And as you said, the later verses, all those verses about Islam meaning peace, those are all early. And yes. all the verses about Islam you know, being like jihad and war, those are all the later verses. Those, those right. trump the earlier verses. And, yes, they do. And that's how it's interpreted by uh, the imams. And the sword of the verse, right? It's, 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 it's second or second to last or last chapter of Islam. That's the one where they don't have the preamble and the opening where the beneficent, the, the merciful, that's the one chapter that, that, that Allah doesn't speak about himself in those terms. Right. It's all out war for all time. Kill the infidels where you find them. Um, and it's throughout the, the entire book. They have that. Uh, and it's, again, it's not as, as, as graphic as everyone would like to believe, but it is spread out through the book violence is the answer to those who don't submit that's how you get them to submit that's how you spread islam and it it, it did take care of that quote-unquote problem where it said well it, it is contradictory but as we say the later verses will override the earlier ones that contradicted yeah and you know a lot of people even when they hear that they still want to argue even when they hear that well you know who's to say what islam is i can't stand that Right. That is so dishonest. It's like saying, <laughs> who's to say what objectivism is? Who's to say we can know? Right. We can know. It is there. Uh, who are you to say? You know, because you don't know. You know, whoever says that, they don't know. I am to say. I'm the one who studied it. Right. I'm the one who read it and reread it and, and learned all this. And, and I was forced to. Again, I would never have picked up the Quran were it not for 9-11. My mom had a Quran in the house, right? You open it up, it's in Arab. It's in Arabic. Right. She, she, she couldn't read Arabic. It was pointed by having the book in the house. Right. It was so you got, were culturally Muslim for a while. Yeah, we, exactly. We didn't eat pork. Um, I, I, again, we were taught the Jews are a scummy earth. Women are shit. Women are a necessary evil. Have sex with them and have a, a male heir. That's basically right. it. I mean, can, why don't we talk also... Um, I know not everyone, I mean, probably few people that watch our show are actually objectivists, but I, there's probably some people who know about objectivism and, and understand it. And I still want to have the conversation with you because you, you said something on Facebook the other day about objectivists being too afraid to be categorized as on the right. Um, yes. And, and specifically, I've heard you criticize objectivist reactions to Islam. Can you talk a little bit about what you think is, is wrong with a lot of the objectivist leaders and, and their viewpoint on this? On Islam? Yeah. Well, they're, they're basically doing what conservatives are doing. And I, after 9-11, I assumed that objectives would be on the vanguard with this issue, that there is nothing, they're not beholden to anything besides the truth, besides reality. And therefore, they will go after Islam the way they go after Christianity and Judaism and religion and faith in general. And when I heard objectives going on TV, going on conferences, and having three or four or five different terms in their mouth coming out within a sentence or two, I was really disappointed. 
Yeah. I was like, what are they doing? They're deliberately when when you when you stick to one term, you could argue, okay, they chose that. Well, when you fall into two, three, four different terms, your main purpose is to not say Islam. Right. And why the hell would an objectivist be concerned about covering for a religion? I have no idea. I still to this day I have no idea. I've had passionate arguments with objectivists over the years. Uh, first conversation I had with objectives at the time said, why, every time you say that, I cringe. Why would you do that? Rand, knowing what I know of Rand, I don't think she ever would have come Oh, absolutely long. not. Rand was never a courageous individual. I mean, even if people disagree with her, which I, I don't really disagree with her, but even if no. you disagree with her on stuff, uh, you know, she was courageous enough to get to the heart of an issue and call it by its name. Absolutely. And there was no way in hell that she would not be uh, adamantly against Islam right now and saying Absolutely. Islam and actually talking about the she would probably have read the Quran at this point yes. and be tearing yes. it apart and talking about why it's, it's it's uniquely evil that's what that's what an intellectual does you get to the core of the truth you find out for yourself and then you share that truth and you speak about it and a lot of objectivists they got lazy and they didn't read the Quran they didn't read they assumed well you know it's faith and all that if it is, then why are you creating these terms? Why are you using radical Islam and totalitarian and Islamic totalitarianism and and Islamism interchangeably? Right. Why? Just if you're going to stick to one, stick to one. And again, when they use more than one, it's because they don't want to use Islam. Right. And they're and perfectly happy they, to criticize Christianity as I mean, Christianity. Is uh, Christianity is evil? They say, okay, fine. And Islam isn't. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's to me, it's embarrassing. And again about this 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 trump issue either i like some stuff he does i hate some stuff he does but i'm not hysterical about him i'm not here like he's the worst creature in the universe he's not right he's he's a, he's a dumb guy he'll do some he'll do some decent things sometimes he doesn't hate the country the way obama did he's not a nihilist like obama obama was a nihilist obama hated the country loved islam he was uh, an enemy of the country in power and i don't remember objectives going after him the way they go after trump and I just don't get that. I, I really don't. I know Leonard Peikoff did. I know Leonard Peikoff coined, you know, pegged Obama as a, as a nihilist 2010. I drew a cartoon about it. And he was absolutely right. You know, he was an atheist who pretended to be a Christian, who had a hard spot for Islam, who hated America. He was raised with, with Muslims and uh, communists. He was raised to hate America. Trump was raised to make money, you know, to enjoy life. Right. And to be a fool, you know. And uh, in a lot of ways, he's he represents a lot of Americans like that. You know, we, we all want to be successful. We want to be, you know, we all want to enjoy our lives, to have fun. But if you're president, I would imagine you would actually crack open a book and start learning about the things that you're spouting off. When you say Islam is great, you, you, you know, you know, you don't know that. When right. Bush said Islam is peace, he knew he didn't know that. Right. He was told by an advisor, oh, nothing this bad could come from religion about 9-11. Well, yeah, it did. Right. And I was so disappointed in objectivists to the point where, yeah, I've lost friends. Uh, I've lost, uh, you know, people have written me off after that because you're not supposed to criticize them. Fuck that. They should be criticized. I think it's insane. We have an evil ideology on the war path and we can't even call it by its name. If objectivists can't do that, nobody can do that. Right. Yeah, it, it's it is. It's disturbing to me. And it's it's I've been coming increasingly uh, disheartened and disappointed with the uh, the objectivist elite over the past several years, and this is one of those issues. I have as well. I have um, as well. And uh, you know, and and I think, frankly, I think the objectivists are um, as a whole, and I, you know, I'm speaking as a broadly. There's exceptions, but uh, I think a lot of them are afraid to um, be associated with the right as well, and they and they're they are afraid of being vilified by the left, and so. They, yeah. you know, there was a book. I won't name the book because I, I, I know a lot of the people that contributed to this book. I know you do as well. Um, it was sent to me before it was published. And they said, oh, can you review it? Uh, it's a, it's a, this book. Can you review it for us? It's a collection of essays. And I was like, sure. And I read it. And uh, I, was ab I was appalled by it. And I never responded with the review because I didn't want to say right. anything bad uh, right. to them. I didn't want to be rude to people that I liked. But That's they, they didn't also. include any critique of Antifa or the totalitarian left or anything. All they did was pay lip service to like, yeah, there's some weird alt-right Pepe the Frog people and they're a problem. Like, fine, they're a problem, but can we talk about the left? No, we can't. We can't they're talk about tiny, the left. They're a tiny, tiny, tiny problem. This alt-right thing oh, it is magnified because of the leftist media. Yes. 
and the they didn't Antifa. talk about the, the left at all. They didn't criticize any of this totalitarian mm. left that's taken over the, the the Democratic Party, basically, or is starting. Well, to. you know, there are left leaning objectivists, there are right leaning objectivists. How about objectivist objectivists? Right. You know, that's a novel idea. Be objectivists. Don't worry about appealing to any other group. Don't worry about that. Yeah. We have this this philosophy, which is which is extraordinary. We have it. We have this the, the founder of the philosophy who is a great. Her books are fantastic. We have such great things. Stop trying to appeal to those who hate you, to those who would never try to appeal to you, ever. I mean, when has the left ever tried to appeal objectives? They smear Iron Rand any any chance they get. Uh, and the right does as well. When Ben Shapiro calls uh, objectives and garbage, he's garbage. Right. You know, it's just it's it's BS. Him and and Peterson, to me. Some some idiots on the right, they're just as bad as some on the left. But to to pretend that the left is 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 not to be uh, judged, that is just it's unacceptable. Yeah, a lot of them are evil, and the the the, the ones in charge are truly evil, anti-American, fire-breathing anti-Americans. Absolutely, they are. And and, I, you know. and, and and some on the right, some are, some are stupid, some some follow certain things. Some are average Americans who really don't, are, are not that political, no. but they know that this these leftists are pretty pretty messed up here. And then you got a guy like 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 Gavin McGinnis, you know. Unfortunately, he started this group. It was it was on, it was on a lark, you know. Uh, they wanted to get this guy late. Yeah, I don't think know? it was an alt right group. I think he just no no. He go there, drink, hang out, certain cities, and then also let's use some of these guys to protect Ann Coulter when she does these speeches, right? Right. And then the media made this out to be Antifa, right. when they actually you know defend themselves from Antifa. Yep. Um, it's embarrassing, but yeah, so. The right has its problems, but nowhere near the point of the left has. Yeah. Nowhere, you know, the right, I mean, they represent freedom. They represent uh, America. They represent the left represents anti-America. They represent anti-free speech. They represent everything that, that, that is bad about this country right now. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I never bite my tongue on this. And again, I don't, I used to hold my criticism for objectives in terms of Islam personally. I used to speak to them personally and try to, really year after year after year try to argue and whether I failed or not I clearly did you know in terms of I couldn't get them to <laughs> yeah, do I it. think you failed man and sorry <laughs> yeah I blew it I blew it the truth didn't work you know no but I try to get these guys to to and they they wouldn't budge you know and uh I'm like okay to hell with it objectivists suck on Islam that's what I wrote in a, and it's true objectivists suck yeah. on Islam on the issue of Islam on, on the issue on the issue and you would think objectivists more than anyone else would would have an ideological battle against this enemy, an ideological battle, right? Uh, because without the truth, fighting for that, there's a good, there will be no successful war against this enemy. Without the truth being spread out there day after day after day to the point where it becomes mainstream, hopefully, it's, you know, eventually, a politician cannot go on stage and say Islam means peace without getting pelted, without getting a tomato, a rotten tomato in his head, and has to bow out from from speech. <laughs> uh, they have to get to the point where they are afraid to lie to us yeah. about what we're facing. They have to be afraid. Yeah. And the only way that happens is if the mainstream, if intellectuals, honest intellectuals, go out there, do their damn homework before they open their mouth. One thing I did, even though I was, I was raised you know, Muslim, after 9-11, I said, okay, I got to find out if these guys were actual you know, devout Muslims. Let me find out before I do, before I open my mouth anywhere, any anytime. So I read the Quran, I read it twice, read everything I get my hands on. Yes, they are. These guys are devout Muslims. And that's when I felt honest enough to discuss this honestly. Whereas other people, other people they say, you know what, uh, after 9-11, they didn't read the Quran. They say, you know what, my term will be, let's just, uh, I want mine to be different than, than that guy's. And the, one of the funniest things post 9-11 was that you have a, uh, an objectivist, right, at, at, at a conference, a panel, and you have a conservative here and whatever, maybe a classical liberal, maybe. And each of them are using different terms to describe the Islamic <laughs> enemy. And it's just, and it's just, I'm, I'm looking, I'm like, guys, at least before the panel, I agree on maybe one term, at least, you know, if you're going to bullshit us, at least make it one bullshit term. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, those things, I'm so attuned to them. And I can't help but think there is, they're blinking. They're being cowards. I can't help but think that. And again, I've gotten people say, hey, you know, those people, you respect those people, they're, they're your friends. Yeah, they are. But on this issue, they suck. Yeah, no. And I, we, I, can't, we can't afford to suck in a time of war. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And it, what's particularly disturbing to me is objectivists pride themselves on getting to the 
the uh, philosophic uh, premises underneath things and and having the ideological uh, wars and debates like that's Absolutely. that's that's what their whole thing is right that's and what it is. Like, <laughs> and, and, and yet on this just... issue they're just cowards it is and 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 it's like guys you have the truth on your side you know the truth and if you don't know the truth you shouldn't be talking about it that's one thing also i don't want to hear anyone anyone else talk about islam and stuff who i know did not do their homework about it i just don't want to hear it and not into a debate about islam per se you could talk about the war but that's why i think a lot of objectives don't even speak about islam because they haven't they haven't studied it. so they're honest in that sense where they're not talking about islam but because they haven't read about islam because they haven't you know studied it because they they don't have the the they don't have the the truth on their side that's why they keep going away from islam and on, on, on this war you know it's 17 years now right post 9 11. we haven't even begun to fight on on any level we, we haven't begun to fight right and, uh, the, and uh, the most important level which is the ideological level where we name the enemy we haven't done that's, that that's the core start of the war once we start that this war sooner than later will be will be ended jihad will be wiped out uh, human beings who call themselves Muslims in the Middle Eastern world will start to realize, wait a minute, um, this is this is bad. And only when they see the ashes of jihad will they wake up and say, wait a minute, maybe this wasn't, maybe Allah, maybe there is no Allah, maybe this was all a lie. Only when they see that. And also when they see it uh, debunked, when they see Islam criticized, mainstream by the West, because right now they, they look at us as suckers. They're like, they when, when there's a jihadist who sees one of these intellectuals out there well the problem is islamic totalitarianism they laugh right they're like oh my god they can't even say the name right. they can't even say islam yep. and that's part of their you know they get fuel from that they're like we got these guys eventually we're gonna get them because they if they can't even say the name of our ideology they can't beat it that's they right. can't beat us yeah they're afraid they're afraid um, and yeah. it's uh it's shameful uh, especially for objectivists, it's supposed to be intellectually fearless. It's supposed to be truth tellers. It's supposed to be truth seekers, and it's supposed to be intellectuals that crack open that damn book, understand what we're dealing with, and then fight it as an intellectual and ideological level. And then from that, it will start to maybe sway some others and go into the mainstream and go into the culture, and then again get to the point where pol politicians cannot dare to say Islam is peace right. without getting kicked, you know, kicked out of office. Right. And right now, even we have the mainstream media, they'll even go after a, a practicing Muslim who criticizes Islam. Yes, okay. yes. So the, the, the imam from um, Australia. Yep. The, the, the one problem I have with him is why hasn't he left Islam? It's right. like, okay, I understand your our arguments and I'm with you, but why are you still there? I right. think he got his, I think he has his shtick. He's the peaceful imam, imam of peace. And it's, you know, he's popular on Twitter or whatever. Sure. But that's why, you know, the, the honest Muslim is the ex-Muslim. When I, I left Islam in, in my mid-teens, it wasn't a heartbreak. It wasn't something in particular like, oh my God, this is evil. I just knew there was something poisonous about it, something wrong, something ugly, something completely unlike what I was seeing in my, in my life as an American in school and my, my friends' lives. Their parents were normal. They never beat them. Our family, you know, we were all beaten. It was a brutal upbringing. Um, so I just left, and it was the point where I started taking morality seriously. And once you start taking morality seriously, once you start taking truth seriously, you got to get the hell out of it. Yeah. You know, naturally, because it's a, it's a lie. It's built on lies. It's built on lies and violence. And then, you know, the only way they can tell us Islam is peace is because if we don't say Islam is peace and don't accept that, we're going to get our ass kicked or we're going to get killed. Yeah. So it's like Islam is peace unless you say otherwise. And uh, <laughs> that's... That's, that's the good, whole thing. That's a good point. By the way, I wanted to congratulate you. I read an article uh, of yours. Apparently, you became white recently. After yes. you left Islam, you became After white. I left Islam. But I just, prior I to that, you were not white. I, that... I was an Arab. I was a dark, <laughs> dark skin, like purple skin, you know? Uh, black hair with a with very short forehead, uh, mustache, and then boom. It was amazing. I tra transformed. <laughs> I was like, wow. Uh -huh. That's, that's the really weird like thing it. to me also yeah. is how many people in, in uh, mainstream uh, conflate Islam with race, and they'll say, "Well, you're a racist if you don't like Islam." It's like it's like that's Muslims. Like Muslim is not a race. It's it's not a race. I mean, look at me. Look at my cousin, blonde hair, blue eyes. Look at it across the world. Look at Iranians, green eyes, light light hair, blonde hair, Turk, Turk Turkish. Um, it's not a race, but that's the only way. When the truth, when you can't fight the truth, bring in racism and hopefully shut that down. And in a lot of cases, it sadly does. It shuts them down. And that's why people don't go after Islam, because if I go after Islam, then they'll say, 
Who cares what they'll say? What does the truth say? Who right. cares what they, who cares what Muslims, yeah, but I'll be called Islamophobe. Who gives a damn? That's a lie, first of all. That's a term. It's, it's like, it's a term like Nazi-phobe. I mean, that's what it is. <laughs> Nazi-phobe. It, it is meant to protect <laughs> Islam, meant to protect, you know, protect it from the truth. Because if you tell the truth, it will eventually go down Islam. Yep. And everyone's lying their asses off about it. And we are, it's not like we're some neutral party here. We're, we, are, we are victims of this. You know, we are targeted by these savages. And we can't even call their ideology by its actual name. It's disappointing, in particular, from objectivists. Yeah. I, I, I expected better. I, um, there were a very, very few objectivists who were willing to say it. Very few. And most of them not even publicly. Right. Uh, which, is, uh, which is sad, because then you get the idea, well, they're just like conservatives. They're just using their version of this pet term. It's like it's pathetic. I mean, I just... Um, I wrote an article called uh, Calling Islam Islam. I said, uh, from naming the enemy to renaming the enemy. And that's, that's what, we, that's what, we, that's what we, we've done. And also, it's like when people tell me, why do you criticize Marvel's Muslim superhero? Wouldn't it give young girls, young girls what? That Islam's cool? Oh, but that's the, the it, comic is horrible. I, it's look, terrible. I'm not a it's comics terrible guy art. generally. I tried to read it, Bosch. It was, uh, yeah. I thought it was written by like a junior high schooler. It was horrible. Absolutely right. It's terrible. And again, it's a leftist term Muslim who's behind it. Then there's the Muslim editor who I believe, I really believe this. She, she knows the deal. She's the uh, head of uh, content and character development, right? Uh, Sana Amanat. I think she went in a meeting with one of those leftist suckers and said, I want to create a Muslim superhero, knowing he wouldn't turn down. And mm -hmm. he, being a cowardly leftist, okay. Without even thinking, like, yes, like, okay, because I can't say no to her. She's brown, right. you know? And she wears a, a kafia. She wears an Arafat, uh, you know, she, you know, she wears an Arafat scarf at conventions. This is how deep she's in. And in terms of the, the, just the look, say, hey, this is, this is reminiscent of the terrorist. Well, keep, just, just keep it in mind. Uh, not that she's a terrorist, but what I'm saying is that she it wants to make it clear that she is on that side. She is with Islam. And I think because what happened was then they had gay characters, black characters, you know, female, and they canceled all those comics, right? And but they retained this one because they're afraid to cancel it. And that's why she knew once once I'm in there with this character, it won't be canceled, no matter the sales, no matter anything. It'll be part of, of, of Marvel. Her name is Miss Marvel, right, you know. Right. And and also in terms of um, she was able to get that in there. So I think she's having her third relaunch, third relaunch, because the sales are so shitty. Jeez. You got Batman selling over 100, over 100,000 copies right a month. She, she sells 13, 12,000 copies. And that's considered a great success, people tell me. Oh, she's very popular. She's not popular. Marvel, what, what they do is they shoehorn, they shoehorn her onto every cover that they can. They make her an Avengers. They make her in a Champions. They make her in every single superhero group. They make her a guest star. It's an ideological thing, and they want to sh shove her down our throats at a time where we need superheroes fighting jihad, not Muslim superheroes denying the existence of jihad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well put. Uh, it's a, it's an example of that social justice convergence has kind of taken over, yeah. taken over that industry. Um, yeah. So do you want, let's uh, you know I know we've been talking for a while. Uh, before we go, I want to can you describe to people um, tell people about your Pigman uh, sure. series and where they like. Let's just talk about what it is first, and then we can talk about where to sure. get it and how they can support you. Sure, thanks. Um, post 9-11, I knew I would respond to the uh, atrocity. I knew. I was working on a graphic novel, my first graphic novel, Table for One. Um, and I say, you know what, I'm going to have to respond to this. And I thought about for a moment to just scrap Table for One. So, you know what, this this new reality is just, it, 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 it's, take, I say, you know what, let me, let, let me keep this, but let me put a little commentary in there. So I did finish it, and I put a little commentary of the restaurant customers post 9-11 and what they might be saying and what they might be thinking. So that was one way to get my ideas out there. And then I say, okay, I'm gonna learn everything I possibly can from this enemy. What is this enemy afraid of? What are they, what, what, what scares them? And I said, well, growing up, the pig was the most disgusting, vile creature on earth to the point where it was, you know, as I mentioned, my cousin got her ass kicked. My mom recoiled whenever a pig was on television. So I said, how about if I create a superhero? And, but, I'm getting ahead of myself, actually. I post 9/11. I, I said Captain America to fight jihad, and I'm going to pitch Marvel this, right? right. right. And halfway through, I'm sure I that like, would have worked. I said that's impossible. They would <laughs> never do that. <laughs> they would never because I'm going to go after Islam, not just jihad. 
I'm going to go after Islam, ideologically, because there's a battle in there. So, and then I said, you know what, just, just grab that. I said, what, what can I do? I said, okay, a superhero, ex-Muslim, knows the enemy, knows the enemy's language, literally, um, dressed in pigskin leather, and makes it known that it's pigskin leather, because if Muslims come in contact with, with pork, pig, and any kind, they might lose their chance to get to paradise. That's why Muhammad Atta was scraping off the uh, frosting off his cake, you know, very worriedly, you know, to make sure that he doesn't get any kind of, uh, you know, a lard before he goes to paradise. So uh -huh. they're scared shit. Yeah, they're scared shit about, uh, about the pig. It's a disgusting creature. In the Quran, two or three times. Uh, and e even in the Quran, though, they say, if you're starving, if you're really, 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 really starving, maybe you can partake in it. But it's just, it's disgusting. And my question to Muslims is, if it's so disgusting, if it's so vile, why did Allah create it? Why did Allah create this disgusting, vile creature that you condemn? But anyway, so I said, how, how I think they I just that? haven't tried bacon, frankly, but that's, that's just, I think own. that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, pig man came from that, it came from my background, came from, as I call it, Islamic pigotry. <laughs> um, and I said, but that's not enough for me. I said, I want to do super comic. I want to fight job, but I also want to fight it ideologically. So what do we do? I said, wait a minute. How about if I make a character, a, write about a cartoonist who creates pig man? So it's two worlds. It's a battle of ideas on one world and a battle of the physical front in the war. I said, cool. You know, so I'll, I'll put myself in there. And I also put myself in a sense where not just to draw myself as a vanity thing, but to say red hair guys can be Muslim, uh, light skin, red hair. I said, how about also if I split myself in two and make it twins? And I was thinking in terms of dualism at that time, the twin towers, mm -hmm. the uh, twin brothers, the twin stories. And that's why some of the covers, you see the, the, the double meanings on them. Uh, Pigman's um, uh, chess, chess symbol also has a lot of that symbolism. So I said, okay, so they're twin brothers. They're raised by Muslim Albanian parents like, like mine. Post 9-11, one became uh, born again Muslim and one became uh, recovered Muslim. And then one after that started, started thinking he's a cartoonist. He, 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 he creates pig man and he gets uh, his brother tries to talk him out of it and he won't listen because he wants to be a free man doing the, the right thing and it gets it escalates a battle so there's a battle between the brothers and then there's a battle between pig man and super jihad who's a friend of his who is actually co-writing anti-jihad books and on 9-11 at the towers at ground zero sees the second plane and concludes of course is Islam and jihad and gets on his knees and starts praying Allah Akbar. Uh, his friend uh, Muhammad, who ends up being Dr. Muhammad, he's uh, an uh, analyst for, for Islam. He's uh, actually a consultant for the president for Obama at that point. Anyway, so it's just it's it's a good way for me to get <clears throat> to destroy the enemy, you know, vi vicariously through a character. And he's a little different than most superheroes. He well, he kills these guys, of course, but he doesn't use weapons. He likes getting close and personal he uses okay. his pigskin leather gloves and he crushes these guys to death a lot and uh he ends up souping up his power issue by issue get, getting stronger and it's just it's it's a great way for me to fight the war the way i think it ought to be fought in a fictional way and a great way for me to fight the, the ideological battle because my my cartoonist is uh knowledgeable knowledgeable about islam he goes and debates panels with leftist a, a, a Catholic, a Jew, you know, he, he goes there and, he, and they have all these battles and it's fun. And a Muslim. And uh, I say all the things that I want to say that I think are important to say about this issue. And I got to criticize the, the comic book field that I love the medium, can't stand the field, can't stand the business of it. I think they're cowards. I think they're gutless turds. I think they are, they are in a business that is dominated by heroes and a lot of them are just villains. A lot of them want to bring everything around us down. They want to not face evil. They want to uh, call things evil and fight those things. Uh, you're a Nazi. You're not a Nazi, but they will call you that and they will fight you because they want to feel heroic, but they're not. Right. So Pigman is, is a good way for me to do that. And then it's funny, it changed as I was going. I say, you know what? Pigman is not just a bruiser. He's not just a brawler. He's an intellectual. He's a PhD. He understands Islam. He, he wrote against Islam for years before 9-11. And then when 9-11 came, he saw it firsthand. He saw the towers. His wife was in a tower. You know, I won't say exactly what happens, but she was there. And he decides, I'm going to have to do something about this. Especially yeah. when, when, when he hears Bush say, Islam is peace. The most powerful man in the world said, Islam is peace. 
basically apologize to the enemy. And he says, I'm gonna have to do something about this. So yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's available in print. I sell it myself on my blog, the Bosch Fawson store dot blogspot. You can find it there. Uh, Amazon, Kindle, uh, Comixology, digitally. Um, the fourth issue is a little late, but it'll be out soon. I'm also have a new book coming out, Peaceful Death Threats, which has uh, the best quote unquote of the death threats I got and rape threats I got in, in the last few months. And it's uh, I drove I drove Muhammad sixty times, about about sixty, all different ways. And it's uh, I'm you know I'm gonna I'm gonna continue doing doing this work. This is what I do, and it's it's unfortunate. I'm one of the only ones, if not the only one, doing it today. Yeah, um, I don't know of any others. Um... So. Comic books, no. Uh, draw Muhammad. People are still doing it. I was, I was gonna, I was gonna judge the contest. People were still drawing Muhammad. Some of them were really good, by the way. Um, so yeah, people are still doing it. You know, for contests and whatnot. Cool. Well, we'll put. I'll put links to all of those uh, ways to get your stuff in the description below. Um, and then, is there? How can people follow what you're doing? You have YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Where do you want people to be? Uh, Facebook. I do have a, a YouTube account, which I'm thinking about doing a little commentary here and there. Okay. Um, Bosch Faustin, at I guess at Bosch Faustin, if that's the, the term that they use. Yeah. And then Facebook, uh, Twitter, banned for life. Uh, Instagram, Pakistan blocked me from Instagram, and then Instagram, you know, made my account inoperable, so I had to start a new one. But that's it. Uh, so there's there's. My my social media is is down to to a Facebook, Facebook, and potentially YouTube at some point. It sounds yes, like. so, yeah. yes. Okay, okay. Well, Bosch, this has been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed the conversation. Me Thank too. you for your time. It was great. It was great, Carter. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Alrighty. Thanks for watching or listening to Unsafe Space. We're at a crucial moment in the history of Western civilization, and it's vital that we have uncomfortable conversations like this one, but they're not part of the mainstream narrative. You won't hear this on CNN or even Fox. So please support this show by liking, subscribing, and sharing. Thanks again.